Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I have a rant for you today. But before we jump on in, let me say thank you again for having jumped on board with us and supported our channel as we creep closer and closer to 3,300 subscribers. Get us there today. Thank you in advance. I try not to make this the Caitlin Clark rant session. <clears throat> And this won't be about Caitlin Clark. This is about Skylar Diggins Smith, who lost her mind in a post game press conference against after they lost to the Washington Mystics last night. Now, I don't really have a problem with her post game situation. In fact, I would like her to go more, hit it harder, hit it harder. Call out what needs to get called out. You are the veteran on that team. But take a look at what she had to say. Is it something they were doing defensively? Like, in this league, if you aren't ready to play, you'll get beat every fucking night. They were ready to play, and we weren't. On both sides of the basketball. Like, they deserve to win the game if we're going to play like that. We need to be hitting our stride right now. We're not there. It's unacceptable how we're playing on both sides of the basketball. And I fucked it up at the end. That's a terrible foul as a vet. You can't make that play, but it shouldn't fucking come down to that. We all got to step our game up. In this league, it only gets harder after the break. And that's fine. That's fine. But if we don't come ready to play from the start, we're going to fucking lose. I know you may not have the answers right away um you guys did have some time off and time to practice and stuff do you anything as far as what could in this league being ready? if you don't come ready to play you will fucking lose why weren't you ready to play it just is what it is for whatever reason we weren't that's what happened that's all i got to say there you have it from skylar digging smith i don't know what was more Interesting about that interview, the amount of F-bombs she dropped, which I have no problem with that. I think people should do that more often. If that's how you feel, let it flow. But I think there's other things that are involved in this in, with this franchise. She did commit a foul with one second left. That allowed them to win the game by two, 74-72. So basically... She's deflecting her responsibility in the loss. While she can sit here and say, I'm a vet, I can't make that play. My dear, it was 72-72 and you fouled someone with a second left to go in the game. With a second to go in the game. Like you fouled someone with one second to go in the game. Look in the mirror. You can easily say and talk about being not ready, that not being ready to play. <clears throat> I think that's the most cliche excuse that exists for, for for sports teams is that they're not ready to play. What the hell does that mean? I don't. I don't believe that. I don't believe in that. There was never a time, and I yeah, I didn't play at a professional or even a collegiate level. I played at a high school level as my highest level. There was never a time where I showed up at a game and was not ready to play. If you're talking about ready in terms of prepared, that is a possibility. Maybe you were not prepared properly with the proper game plan to play to the best of your ability. Sometimes that's on the coach. Sometimes that's on the players not understanding what they're seeing. Now, the Washington Mystics suck. And I think there's a bigger problem with Seattle. Seattle's now one in three since the All-Star break. Seattle was considered a contender, of a team that could potentially win the championship. I think they had a lot of players that were highly overhyped. I think primarily the most overhyped player is their, is their best player, Jewel Lloyd. Jewel Lloyd was 5 for 18. You're 5 for 18 with your best player. You're probably not going to win. You're probably not going to win. And then uh, Neka Ogumake was 4 for 14. So you have nine of 32 between your two best players. That's a problem. 
So was it that they're not ready to play, or is it they just missed? And I think that's what you know. This is such a cliche thing to say. If you're not ready to play again, I don't know what she means by not being ready to play because she really didn't answer the question. Why are you not ready to play? Are you not? And she did this little thing where it's like, why aren't you? That goes back to some issues that she seems to. I mean, she didn't know how to answer. She created. She created a situation in this press conference that she wasn't truly prepared to answer. She thought that she could get away with saying what she said and then not have to actually go more in depth and actually truly answer the question at hand, which is why? Why are you not ready to play? Is it on your coach? Is it on the players? What is the situation? Because you just played this exact same team in Washington a couple days ago and beat them, and then you came back home and you lost to them. But I have no problem with her little tirade there. I like it. I think it's. I think it shows some level of passion and giving a shit. It looks like she was in tears before she walked into that pre- press conference because she was crazy levels of emotional, crazy levels of emotional there. And Skylar Diggins Smith. I mean, she does have some past mental health things. I I can't speak on them. I know what it says, managing. I've seen managing anxiety and depression. Um, I I have no idea. It's none of my business. And that looked like some issues going on there that might be bigger than basketball for her. So I don't know which way to go on this topic because I don't know really what the problem is because at the end she looked really freaking messed up. Like, here's a quote that I'm seeing about some stuff that she said in the past about her anxiety and mental health journey. I was like, man, am I going to be able to fit in socially with this team? Am I going to sound like somebody's mom? You know, because I'm a stay-at-home mom. To come back after 21 months of being a stay-at-home mom, can I adapt to this environment again? Are they going to think I'm weird? I think just being real with myself about how I feel and how things make me feel, I think I've always struggled with anxiety. I just think I didn't know what that was until I talked to someone about it, about how I was feeling. And like, oh, that's anxiety. I thought it was just sky and it's like you're not the only person feeling this way, but sometimes you hesitate to share it. I don't know. I I, I don't know what to truly say about stuff like that because I think everyone suffers from some level of anxiety and stress and all the other things that could potentially be, I mean, whether it's an ADHD, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole on this stuff, but depression, what is, you know, people that don't have depression don't truly get why people who are always, who have, who say, who are diagnosed depressed, what that really means. Like, it's not, it's not about like I'm watching television and I see a show that makes me sad. It's not about, okay, this situation here makes me sad. It's about even when things are going great, you're still sad. So nothing really takes you out of that feeling of sadness. Um, That's how it's been explained to me by people that I know who have it or who have been diagnosed with it. But Skylar Diggins-Smith went off here, and I think there's bigger underlying issues within this franchise that are affecting her. Because that reaction to losing a game and then turning it into we're gonna we're gonna fucking lose if you're not prepared to play, but you never told us why you were not prepared. I want to know why you're not prepared. I want to know what the reason is. What what has you unprepared? Because the reality during a basketball season, specifically basketball, is that you can't really make a whole lot of adjustments during your season. You just go out and play. You're not gonna have three days of practice before most games. You just played Washington two days ago. You're playing them again now at home, and you get and you lose by two. What makes what makes someone else what makes someone else more ready to play? Is it that they bring energy? Is it that they bring a passion? Is it that they bring like my back's against the wall mentality? Man, look here, man, that back's against the wall mentality is corny to me. 
We watch the NBA playoffs every single year, and we hear the same old rhetoric. We hear the same old shit. The Boston Celtics won the NBA championship four games to one. What happened to Dallas's back against the wall situation? What happened to them? I, I, like that's the thing. Like it, Minnesota loses to Dallas four to one. What happened to Minnesota's back against the wall situation? Because in Game Five, they got absolutely they, they got beaten in a bloodbath. So what happened to their need to be successful or their need to perform at a high level and not get embarrassed on their home floor? Because they got smoked in, in Game Four. I mean, sorry, Game Five. They got smoked by 21 points on their home court in a in a game clincher. So I, I would love to hear some of the responses. I mean, because I played sports. Maybe again, not the highest levels, but I played enough sports competitively in my life. And I've never understood this concept of I'm not, we're not ready to play. If you're not ready to play from a you're not prepared by your coach, that's one thing. But not being ready to play because you just didn't play hard or because you didn't bring max effort, which I find disgusting if you play sports, you should always bring max effort. That's one of the things that I've always appreciated about players like Michael Jordan and LeBron James and Kobe Bryant. You never had to truly worry about the max effort level from these guys. There might be days where they don't play well, but you never really had to worry about, is this guy going to come and show up? I think the only time you ever saw that with LeBron was in the NBA Finals in games four and five against Dallas. But otherwise, you never had to worry about if a guy's gonna if these guys are gonna show up. They always show up. That's what makes them so damn great. But the other players, yeah, sometimes you do have to worry about them showing up and playing hard. And the question for Skylar Diggins Smith is: Are you the reason that are you part of the problem? Because you're the point guard. You're the point guard. Your shooting guard has a terrible night. So what did you do to help that shooting guard get better position for better shots? Did you set her up for layups? I didn't see the game, so I can't speak on it. Or is she just jacking a whole bunch of bad jump shots? I don't know what she's doing. Are you setting your team up? Are you getting your team? What are you doing? You're the point guard. The point guard of every basketball team is supposed to be a leader. Are you leading? Or are you sitting here crying on a pre at a press conference? I don't know. You tell me. But I don't like the looks of that in terms of the perspective of you don't actually – you make a statement and then don't actually answer the question. But I do appreciate the passion component because, yes, I want my players to be pissed when we lose. I'm so sick of seeing this huggy, lovey, lovey, huggy, huggy, wow, lovey, dovey, huggy shit that I see in every sports – contests nowadays where people are flip-flopping jerseys after every single game. I haven't seen that really in the WNBA, the flipping of the jerseys, but they, they make them shake hands. NBA players, when I came up, didn't shake hands after games. They walked off the floor. Now everyone wants to have a conversation about how, where they're going for dinner tonight so they can go hang out and do whatever they do. And then you have the football players that after they just got beat by 30 are sitting there smiling with the person that just kicked the shit out of them on the field. Oh, I want your jersey. I want your jersey. Man, shut the fuck up. What happened to true real competition? So that's the one thing I do appreciate about that. Because I want you to be mad that you lost. I can't. I, I tell you what, I'm not a Chicago Sky person. But when you heard the, the, those, so whatever the fuck was going on in their game and when, when that press conference was going on a couple of days ago, where you hear stuff being thrown around the locker room, whether it was a fight between players or someone just grabbing chairs and whatever the hell else and just chucking it into the wall, I want my players to be pissed. I can't stand people that walk around smiling after they lose. And while I can sit here and say, okay, you know, I, well, I, well, I can't. I can't sit here and say, "Well, they're paid so much money; they should just come with effort at all times." So that's not the case in the WNBA because in the WNBA, we know the deal. They're not being paid that kind of money. But in, prof in professional men, in the, in the in the NBA, in the NFL, you're making a boatload of bread. You should be pissed. 
You should be expected to come and bring your best effort every single game. I shouldn't see you smiling after you lose. So I'm very happy to see that level of passion from her. However, I want to know if there's something deeper. We'll see what happens when they play their next game. When they, when they play their next game, we'll get a better idea because that's going to be a telltale sign of what's going on with that franchise. And if they have any shot and shit of making the uh, – they're going to make the playoffs, but if they're a contender or not, because right now they don't look like a contender. They don't look like a team that you should worry about in the playoffs because right now they are fading. Well, they're one in three in their last four. Where are they in the standings right now? And right now they're still – they're fifth. So they've now fallen behind the aces. They're a game. They're three games ahead of Phoenix. They're four and a half against ahead of India. I don't think they'll fall behind the, the fifth spot because of how wide of a margin it is with how many few how few games are left. But you never know if they have a complete implosion. You never know what's going to happen because they came in after the All Star break. They were seventeen and eight. <clears throat> now they're eighteen and eleven. We shall see. But Skylar Diggins, look at that dropping the bombs, man. What do you think of her little post-game tirade? Do you like seeing stuff like that from players? Do you find it contrived? Do you find it fake? Do you find it real? Does it make you smile to see someone that actually seems to care? At the same time, did you do you want do you want to know what I want to know? Why are you not ready to play? You should always be ready to play. Leave your thoughts and comments in this and down below. Can't wait to see you guys again. Come on now.